On this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at some research presented by the University of Vermont Extension looking at hemp cannabidiol drying trial. So hopefully you can follow along and learn some information here on the research presented. And then if you want to learn about it in more detail, links will be provided in the video so you can look at the full trial and its full details if you so choose. All right, let's get into the drying temperature effect on CBD content of cannabis based on the UVM data. And that's the University of Vermont extension here. So if you're looking for the actual original publication, this is the uh, exact link here. Welcome to take a look at it. I'll provide with a brief overview in this video lecture. So first off, dryer temperature, humidity, and harvest moisture. So here we're looking at some of the data presented. And at harvest, the moisture of the flower buds was statistically similar, which generally uh, would make sense. The average actual temperature and relative humidity for each treatment indicated that the 105 Fahrenheit treatment dryer with the buds did not reach 105 degrees Fahrenheit. What does that mean? If we look here at the data, um, actual temperature, we can see that they had it set for 105 degrees Fahrenheit, but only got it up to 86.4 was the average actual temperature. They did note in the research they had some issues with this particular drying oven. It was unclear why the dryer was unable to maintain a consistent temperature over the drying period. This, this is what happens in science. The dryer had an average temperature that was only 7 degrees higher than the drying treatment at 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit there. So something went wrong with that particular dryer, but does not mean all the data here is null and void. There's actually some usable data here. When drying the bud and stems, this is bud and stems, at 105 degrees Fahrenheit, dryer did not reach its average temperature until after seven hours and fluctuated the most in temperature in the first three hours as it warmed up. Although after the first seven hours, it remained more consistent temperature. This is another important uh, kind of data point, information to provide in the sense that it does take some time to warm up and initially there might be some more fluctuations here that growers need to be aware of. However, the 80 degree dryer did not have this problem and temperatures uh, neared 80 degrees Fahrenheit right away. So it's just something with these warmer temperatures, they noted uh, the changes there. That's what's also important in science to kind of document what happens, even though it may not go as intended to document that, just so you have a better understanding of the data when it's presented. Then we also have the average relative humidity presented and the harvest moisture presented here as well. So hourly bud only temperature and humidity. And they were looking at the buds only and then the buds and the stems. So hourly temperature and relative humidity is for the buds only experiment is presented here. Here we have the temperature in Fahrenheit and then we have the time here and we have the different colors um, shown here. Extending out, we could see that there's an overall decrease in the ambient relative humidity over the time, ambient temperature, and the um, 80 degree Fahrenheit dryer humidity and temperature. So here's the humidity, here's the temperature, very consistent, and then here's the temperature for 105 and the relative humidity here. We can definitely see, based on our data points, that the 105 dryer relative humidity decreased uh, to a much greater um, level there as the temperature came down. So again, relative humidity is here, temperature is here. See that relative humidity definitely came down quicker at the 105 degrees compared to the 80 degrees. Is that necessarily better? We'll see later, uh, but that's at least a quick overview of what this data is, table is showing. Then we, they looked at the hourly bud and stem temperature related to relative humidity. So the bud and stem experiment, uh, average dryer temperature were approximate to the desired temperatures and the hourly temperatures and humidities. So again, here we're seeing uh, temperature here, very consistent at 80. Temperature for 105, we'd expect it to be somewhere right around here. We can see it did fluctuate a little bit. And then the relative humidity here of the 80 degree temperature so decrease and 105 definitely decreased um, much quicker here in relative humidity. So when we're looking at the total potential CBD here, looking at the data table uh, presented, we have the treatment, the buds only potential CBD, buds and stem potential, and then trial total potential CBD percentage. So in the buds only study, uh, keep in mind this is the buds only column right here, the ambient temperature resulted in significantly higher total potential CBD than drying buds at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So here we have a 7.71 percentage compared to only a 5.88 percentage point here. The total potential CBD of the buds dried at 80 degrees Fahrenheit did not significantly differ from the higher and lower temperature treatments and resulted in CBD percentages between 
the two extremes. So here's the ambient temperature, and then here's um, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It was a little bit less, but not um, majorly less, in even when they looked at the stats. When drying blood and stem materials, let's look at this column here, there was no significant difference between the CBD concentrations of 105 and um, 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So that's a kind of important little uh, note there. And this study should be repeated because of the issues that they had with the dryers maintaining consistent temperatures. So again, just keep that in mind um, there. But we are noticing some initial data that there could be differences here notice with the different temperatures. So this kind of gets into the uh, speed versus quality uh, kind of concept or idea. Uh, while the use of higher temperatures resulted in faster drying times, we saw the graph, impact of drying temperatures on the quality of their product should be taken into consideration. In this trial, dry, drying at a higher temperature above 8 degrees Fahrenheit resulted in significantly lower total potential CBD concentrations. So it's important to remember that this is only one year of data, limited replications in drying capacity. Further research is needed, and this trial should be replicated with dryers that are more accurate. But it gets into the concept of speed versus quality. The faster you go, the less quality you, you might be getting. So again, that speed versus quality is something to keep in mind. So looking at the data here, ambient or 80 degrees Fahrenheit would be kind of the maximum. Uh, wouldn't want to go much more than that, uh, even though it might quick, quicken up the speeding the process of the drying, it speed up the drying process, you don't want to sacrifice your quality that you've been trying to grow and perfect through the entire growing season at the very end just to make the drying times less. So this is just some data here to support that, that you're looking at 80 degrees or less, really trying probably for that more 60 degrees Fahrenheit would be the quality target. Going much more than that, yeah, it'll dry faster, but at the risk to quality.